Hey guys, what's going on? It's Chris from The Grid Hi-Fi. We're out here checking out this brand new audio research. This is their i50. This is their integrated tube amplifier. This is gonna be a controversial video. I get it. <laughs> Leave comments down below. Uh, any part throughout this video, I'd love to hear from you guys, but we're gonna be competing this i50 against the tried and true MA352 integrated amplifier back there. We're gonna get into all that. We're gonna do it right after the intro. All right, guys, so check it out. We got in this corner, we have the audio research. This is their brand new to us, right? Uh, we, we just became a brand new audio research dealer. So this is an all tube type of construction. As you guys see here, four power tubes up front. You also have three right here in the middle. And then you have these cool type, I, they kind of look like capacitors, but they have a LED readout on them. And that gives you readouts for your volume. So since these were already on, um, you don't get any countdown, but if you turn it off, these actually count down from 50 to start warming up the tube. So really, really cool. Like I was talking about 50 watts a channel, you have eight ohm, four ohm capabilities with these uh, completely discrete um, outputs. You also have balanced and um, unbalanced inputs as well as uh, two of the unbalanced inputs. You have the ability to do one of them's assignable and you can actually do uh, pass through on it. So that's really, really cool. Options on this one, you can, uh, you can, you can option it out with any color you want. These are cer cer Cerakote finishes, so it's gonna be easily protected against marring and scratches. As you guys see, this one is a striking red with a little bit of black finish. You also have the glowing tubes on there, which adds to the coolness. You have the glowing readout in the front for your volume, like I was talking about. Another option for you guys is on the back, you have the ability to add um, um, a turntable to it. That's an, uh, an addition. So if you wanna do that, that's gonna be an option for you. On the other side, on this side in the back, you will see that you can actually do a uh, digital upgrade. So if you wanna have your optical uh, USB type of configurations, that's basically how you're gonna connect it. So that's pretty much the ins and outs of this one. Let's talk about the elephant in the room. We have this Macintosh right in the back. All right guys, so in this corner we have the Macintosh MA352. This is their integrated amplifier. This is a little bit different, right? So again, like I was talking about, this is gonna be a controversial video. This one has a couple different options for you. We have a tube section for your um, pre-amplification stage and you have solid state for your amplification stage. So three, or correction, 200 watts for eight ohms and then you also get 320 watts for four ohms. You have the classic blue meters up front. You have your analog type of uh, display right here. You also have the ability to do your headphone amplifier right there, volume over on this side, and put over on that side. Everything is pretty much one-to-one -one on the configuration except for the uh, equ equalization right here. So all these are set to zero, right? And then that's kind of it. So you have classic Macintosh styling over here. You have several different inputs on the back. You have RCAs. You have balanced, unbalanced, as well as a phono uh, input on the back of this one. Um, but besides that, let's let's go ahead and see how these things perform. So really what I'm gonna be doing, let me go ahead and take this camera off the tripod. Basically what I'm gonna be doing is we have the Focal Aria 926s over here set up. We're basically gonna hot swap the speakers. Correction, we're gonna hot swap the speaker connections on the back of the amplifiers. We're gonna try to get them matched as closely as possible to the same volume. I I am almost guaranteed that 10% volume on this one does not equal or translate into 10% volume on that one back there. So we will verify with the dB meter and then we will give you guys our honest, accurate opinions. Let you guys know which one of these things might be right for you. And that's kind of how it's gonna go. So let's get into it.
All right, guys, I think that's going to wrap it up for those demos. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Um, I'd like to actually read those. We're going to open up a discussion. Again, this video probably isn't going to be very popular because <laughs> there are specific people that have an absolute affinity for a specific brand, one versus the other. So let me just talk about the overall setup so that you guys know during this whole thing, there wasn't any craziness done. So the idea was it was supposed to be kind of like a, a scientific experiment. We used the exact same cables. We did a hot swap in between. Well, not really hot swap. We you know, turned it, turned the unit off and then uh, had this unit off, swapped out the cabling. So we had the unbalanced tributaries cables, tributaries uh, speaker wires. We basically just did the complete swap in between those. Now, um, the one thing that I did to standardize this is that I didn't just turn the volume to the exact same volume on both of them. I don't think that that's a fair way to you know, assess things. Since these are both integrated, you don't necessarily have a preamp telling it the exact uh, volume and you know, going from model to model, gain matching and, and the, the, the signal matching is gonna be a little bit different. So what I did is I put these to a specific volume and I tested it with a third party DB meter. I, it, I didn't use my cell phone, it's, 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 it's a trusted DB meter. But on that first song with Jamiroquai, it was targeting 86 DB. And then on that second song, which I didn't touch any of the volumes in between these two, um, the second song we were targeting around 89 dB. So that's the average, right? So I'm, I'm using the um, I'm using the dB meter to basically <laughs> let you guys know what what the difference was in that sonically correction. So the difference in between these two, obviously, there's a visual um, difference that's going to that that may perform into someone's cup of tea versus another person's. But uh, warm-up times were roughly similar. This one has a dedicated 50 seconds. This one turned on uh, probably, I would say, 20 seconds before this one was done. So, I mean, if that's important to you, <laughs> then, you know, if you really can't wait the extra couple seconds, then you know, maybe, maybe that's important to you. But overall, the sound differences, I think, between the, the, these, these are pretty, these are pretty close in, in comparison, right? A little bit higher MSRP, a little bit lower. Um, and so the idea is, is with the sound characteristics is pretty much what most people care about. Looks aside, you know, you can have something that performs better, doesn't look as great. So, um, I, I definitely, I definitely subscribe to that, uh, notion on this one. I love the way this one looks and it performs awesome. So on that first song with Jamiroquai, you hear a lot of bass, you hear a decent amount of mids and the highs are a little more shimmery because the guy has kind of like a falsetto voice. So with that, uh, whenever I did the test on the Macintosh, I noticed that the, the highs was a little more rounded off and it was kind of opposite of what I was gonna expect because I'm used to listening to the Macintosh. Like that's, you know, that, that's the standard you know, reference in this room. It, it just makes sense, right? But whenever this one was hooked up to those Aria 928, 926s, you could definitely hear that the tweeter wasn't working as hard to produce the clarity that was needed for that specific track. Now on that second one with Alabama Shakes, obviously there's a decent amount of bass in there. You hear the xylophones, you know, going off and stuff like that. So with that one, you kind of hear the quickness and uh, the dynamics of the speakers. And then right whenever the song peaks around mi a minute or so, I guess, well, the entrance peaks, um, you actually hear the entire full room um, around you. So with that one, I felt that it was the the sound was a little more effortless on the audio research. I did like the way that the Macintosh sounded on the low end, 
But, you know, obviously when you're talking about tubes versus solid state, um, that is something to think about. But in comparison, direct comparison in between the two, I don't think that these tubes are anything to, 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 to scoff at. Really, I, everything I've heard about tubes is that you get a little bit more subdued low end. So those percussives or the, the percussion, you know, the dynamics on that low end, the beef, you know, the, the full well-roundedness of a song is what uh, is what lacks. But with this, <laughs> it's, it's completely uh, proven my previous experience, um, you know, it's, it's, it's proven it wrong. So I'm, I'm happy to be wrong about something. And this is a really, really cool product. I think you guys should enjoy it. Um, but again, this video probably isn't going to be very popular. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments about which one would your favorite be. And, you know, keep an open mind, right? So it's over the internet. Come in and check them out. So that's really the idea behind things. But this one between these two, this one versus that one, I think that the audio research is definitely the clear winner. So if you guys want to grab me this stuff, you guys know who we are. We're the Grid Hi-Fi. Uh, reach out online. You guys can check us out at gridhifi.com. Pick up the phone, shoot us an email. We'd be happy to help you out. That's all I got for you guys. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. If you guys want more content like this, we're going to be doing a whole slew of new audio research uh, products because we just got a whole pallet of them in the back. A uh, lot of new products to let you guys know about, and really excited to let you guys know about this brand. If you guys like Macintosh, we'd be happy to help you out as well. So that's pretty much all I got for you guys. Catch you next time.